Well, hello there. I'm the Old Biddy. Welcome to Old Biddy Gaming. And I would like to introduce you to a game that I really, really enjoy playing. It's called Worm Unlimited. Uh, this video is just going to be an introduction. The next video will show you how to get your game set up because it you just don't hit play and get into the game. You have to do some setup. Uh, for a little background, the game was created by Code Club AB. Uh, they first came out with a game called Worm Online, which you can still play. It was released in 2006, so it was a very old game. I started playing it probably about 2008-2009, but it's a subs that was a subscription game. So months to month, play the thing, and if you did have free play, but your uh, skill gain, you could only get up to 20. With 20 skill gain, you couldn't even ride a horse. So there wasn't much you could do in the game. When I tried to play it, all of the land was taken, so you couldn't really find a piece of land to settle on very easily and it was just hard uh, but it was a very very grindy of course I enjoy grind so it doesn't bother me but it did bother a lot of people uh, there was I don't know it was just a strange game but I did fall in love with it so they did do an upgrade they updated the game here recently and they made it more appealing to today's gamers and I haven't tried it out I'm I don't really like to pay for a subscription you know there's so many great free games out there that you know I and at, back at that time I just didn't have the money to pay a monthly fee to play a game uh, but I did fall in love with it now Worm Unlimited the game we will be playing Code Club brought this game to Steam in 2015 when I heard that they were actually bringing a standalone version to a place called Steam I was absolutely ecstatic. I thought, oh man, I finally get to play it. Well, it wasn't that easy. Uh, it is a standalone version of Worm Online. It has everything that Worm Online has, but the game, you, you buy the game and you can play it forever. No subscription. They ha it has player-run servers, and most of those are modded. As you can see in front of me where it says Internet, all these are player-owned and run servers. Some of them are locked. You have to have pa password to get in. Those are private. Uh, the ones without the locks on them are public, which is great. It tells you what version of the game they're playing, how many players they have, what kind of ping you can get, which is really interesting. I have played on a server like this, <coughs> excuse me, but I like playing by myself. Usually if you play on one of these servers, you don't get the land for free. You've got to pay for the land, you know, uh, you can forage things and kill animals and sell their hides and things like that to get money to pay for it but I just like the single player version of it the single player and the 
internet servers has it has a hundred pl hundred and thirty plus skills a hundred and thirty plus skills ten player characteristics five hundred cooking recipes with over ten thousand variations you can tame you can breed animals you can build ships there's PvP and PvE, whichever way you want to play it. They've got trolls, forest giants, dragons, unicorns, uh, giant spiders, scorpions. I mean, all kinds of weird stuff. Plus, you get the normal animals. Uh, you know, the chickens and sheep and uh, goats and cows and horses and you can ride horses which is great you can ride just about you can ride any animal which is fun to do uh, it's got seasons during certain certain seasons you can harvest things that, uh, like olive oil and apples uh, certain you know at certain times of the year you can make wine you can make beer. There, I don't think there's anything in this game that you can't do. Uh, there's mods you can install, install, but I don't do the mods. I haven't ever figured out how to do it. There are tutorials on how to do these things. Same way if you want to set up your own server. That involves router you know working with your router and making changes and things like that and I'm I'm I just can't do it but like I say there are tutorials telling you how to do that and I'll show you some of them tomorrow uh, it's got religion it's got four gods three for the white light one for the black light and each god gives gives you a different benefits you don't have to play the religion side of it, but, you know, some people do. Some people like doing the priest. If you become a priest, then eventually you can make a grass and put it in your pens with your animals, and the grass will never disappear, never get any, you know, eaten up by the animals, which I really enjoy. I think it's called enchanted grass. Uh, there's two modes. There's an adventure mode, and it's got some, some quests. Uh, it's got a starting area, some NPCs. There's three kingdoms. Uh, you'll have to pick the one, you know, the kingdom that you want to be affili affiliated with, and then your enemies with the other two. If you do pick freedom, though, you're an enemy of all of them. So be careful, and if you decide to play adventure, do not pick freedom, because everybody will be out to kill you. Uh, I you'll have to have to build inside your kingdom area, and there's not really there's not that much room to build, but there's hidden chests that you can find with keys and just all kinds of neat items. I mean, it's 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 kind of populated. You can talk with the NPCs, but most of them just give you gibberish. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of adventure. I've played it, but I'm still not a big fan of it. The one, the one that I'm in love with is the creative map, and it's not one that you can just go in there and do everything on and don't have to skill up or do anything. It's just called that because it's basically blank. It doesn't have the NPCs, it doesn't have buildings, you know, it's just open. <coughs> Let me get a drink of coffee. I'm I'm choking here. There. That's better. But in the creative mode, you've got the whole world to yourself. You can build anywhere you want to do anything you want to do it's just all freedom uh, there but like I said there's no NPCs no new newbie area and 
but there are things called soul stones. And they're in different areas, and they are set up if you... I'll have to show you tomorrow, but if you pick a random spawn location, you will end up at one of these soul stones to start your game. Uh, you can set your set up your own server for you and your friends, but like I say, you'll have to change your router settings and all that. And I've never tried it. They do have a Wormpedia. It's wormpedia.com and it is a encyclopedia for worm. It's mainly for worm online. That's what it was built for. But most of the things in the Wormpedia applies to Worm Unlimited also. There's a few things in there that we don't do, which is a little bit strange, but yeah, it works. Uh, the crafting, it it does get into the crafting. It does show tell you how to do it and everything else. The regular forum it's got a section for Worm Online and Worm, Worm Unlimited, so you can go to, you know, visit on the forum, see what's going on, talk to other people, which, you know, is really, really fun to do. But this game has, it's got building, farming, you can l alter the landscape, uh, it's got fishing, I mean, Everything you could ever think of that would be in a game is in this game. Tomorrow, we will be going to the setup screen, and I will show you how, <coughs> excuse me, how to set up a, a private game. And it will show up in your LAN server. And that will be you alone, like I said, you know, if, if you want to play on a server, there's plenty of servers out there for you to show up in. But I just wanted to give you a kind of an overview of the game. Uh, if you want to go to the Wormpedia, click on that link. If you want to, if you want to go to forums, you can click on that link. Uh, but like I say, it's called Worm, W-U-R-M, Unlimited. And it's available on Steam. In fact, it's the very first game that I had bought on Steam. I had no idea even what Steam was back then. But I, I loved this game so much, and I was so excited at getting it. It was the very first game that I had bought. The graphics are a little outdated, yeah. But to me what the game is about and what you can do in it overrides that. Now the developers have signed off on this game. They did update Worm Online, but from what I understand they don't have any plans to do anything else to Worm Unlimited. I think what happened was they're more interested in getting the uh, subscription fees on Worm Online, so so they're making more money doing that way than trying to sell. You know, I don't think the game sold as well as they thought it would in Steam, so they brought it up so far and then dropped it. But like I say, it's it's got everything in there. Everything works. It's great. <coughs> Pardon me, I've got something in my throat. But anyway, tomorrow I will take you into the settings menu, and we will go over that. And I hope you'll be interested in coming back and seeing how that's done. Once once we get the settings done, then then we'll go into the game. Like you do as a tutorial, <clears throat> I do want to uh, visit the different soul stones, show you different areas you know, different starting areas, so you can pick, you know, maybe where you want to start, kind of get an idea of what different things look like.
but I hope you have a great day. I hope you stuck around for all of my introduction, and I will get the next video up on this in the morning as soon as I, hopefully if I've got power and internet, I will get it up as soon as I can, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.